is Dr. Miles Boothroyd. I am the professor of saxophone at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, and I'm here to talk to you today about some strategies for learning this year's WSMA Saxophone Jazz Audition Etude. Now this is the Keep Smiling Etude composed by Mike Carubia from the Carubia and Jarvis uh, Etude book. And there are just a couple of things I'd like to talk about, some strategies for learning this and performing it more effectively. And then I'll invite you to listen to a demonstration of my own performance of this so you can see how I'm implementing some of my recommendations from this current work. The first thing that I want to talk about with any kind of jazz etude is the importance of crisp and clear articulation. That's one of the most defining features of any good jazz performance. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this etude is that it's filled with these rooftop accents, also known as marcado markings. Now, the definition of that word means marked and accented, but in jazz, we really think about it as being short and punchy, having that real kind of impact. So, for instance, when I see that first note of the whole etude, that G, that marcado mark over the top, I'm going to play that with a lot of air, a stronger tongue, and really short and powerful, like this. <laughs> I'm giving it all I've got. And in context, you'll hear how strong that impact really is. So I invite you to really focus on playing those marcado accents very strong throughout this etude. The second thing you want to focus on regarding articulation is how you end any given phrase or subphrase, particularly when it's followed by a rest. I want to give you an example. If you take a look at measure nine, which is the third line down in this etude, you'll see that you have some articulation patterns, including a slur that goes into beat four. Do you see that slur from the C to the E with the staccato mark over it? Now, normally we'd expect to really follow the slurs very faithfully, and it would sound like this. And I slurred into beat four just as what was written there. Da, da, di, da, di, da. However, because this is a jazz etude, we want to make everything clear and crisp where we can. When I look at that measure, I see a really strong arrival on beat four, an E with a staccato mark over it that needs to be emphasized and drawn, given some attention. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to lightly tongue that note, even though there's a slur connecting to it. I'm going to play that measure like this. And if you caught it, I actually tongued that very last note of the bar. Da, Da, di, da, di, da. Even though there's a slur marking going into it, I'm going to interpret that as a phrase marking that connects the idea, and yet I'm still going to articulate the last note because it's the last idea of that little miniature motive or subphrase. And so I want to make sure every end of my subphrases have a degree of punchiness and clarity to them. Here's the last thing I'll say to make your performance of this etude as engaging as it can be. Anytime we have a long tone in jazz, and in this etude, that might be a half note or longer. I encourage you and invite you to play it with a clear sense of forward direction. A small crescendo, an increase of intensity, and a sense that that note is really going somewhere. So for instance, as I look at the first two measures, I notice that in measure two, I have a long tone, an eighth note on the and of two, tied to a half note. To me, that's a pretty long note in the context of this jazz etude. So I'm not going to simply play it statically. I'm going to give it some direction. I'm going to play the first two bars for you and invite you to listen to that long tone and hear how I give it some direction and shape. Did you hear it? I played that long tone and I gave it a sort of sweeping upward gesture, a little miniature crescendo to make it very clear that that's going somewhere, it has direction, it has a sense of growing intensity. And that way, our performance never becomes stagnant, never becomes boring, always stays interesting. So those are my general tips for this jazz etude, Keep Smiling. I'd love to work with you on this. If you'd like to get together and connect for a lesson, I invite you to do so. We can work on this in more detail, and I can share many additional strategies for producing a jazz sound, jazz articulation, and style. In the meantime, I'd ask the curious to check out my recording of this etude so you can see some of these stylistic considerations implemented in my performance. Thanks so much for listening. Thank <laughs> you.